Chapter Fifty Six of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Women of History by Anonymous. Chapter Fifty Six. Esther Van Marie, seventeen twenty three. Sir Walter Scott. This unfortunate lady, when she first became acquainted with Swift, was in her twentieth year and joined to all the attractions of youth fashion and elegance the still more dangerous gifts of a lively imagination a confiding temper and a capacity of strong and permanent affection conscious of the pleasure which swift received from her society and of the advantages of youth and fortune which she possessed and ignorant of the peculiar circumstances in which he stood with respect to another naturally and surely without offence either to reason or virtue miss van marie gave way to the hope of forming a union with a man whose talents had first attracted her admiration and whose attentions in the course of their mutual studies had by degrees gained her affections and seemed to warrant his own the friends continued to use the language of friendship but with the assiduity and earnestness of a warmer passion until vanessa the poetical name bestowed upon her by him rent asunder the veil by intimating to swift the state of her affections and in this as she conceived she was justified by her favourite though dangerous maxim of doing that which seems in itself right without respect to the common opinion of the world we cannot doubt that he actually felt the shame disappointment guilt surprise expressed in his celebrated poem though he had not courage to take the open and manly course of avowing those engagements with stella or other impediments which prevented him from accepting the hand and fortune of her rival without therefore making this painful but just confession he answered the avowal of vanessa's passion in raillery and afterwards by an offer of devoted and everlasting friendship founded upon the basis of virtuous esteem vanessa seems neither to have been contented nor silenced by the results of her declaration but to the very close of her life persisted in endeavouring by entreaties and arguments to extort a more lively return to her passion than this cold proffer was calculated to afford upon swift's return to ireland we may guess at the disturbed state of his feelings wounded at once by ungratified ambition and harassed by his affection being divided between two objects each worthy of his attachment and each having great claims upon him while neither was likely to remain contented with the limited return of friendship in exchange for love and that friendship too divided by a rival time wore on miss van marie was now dead her two sons survived her but a short time and the circumstances of the young ladies were so embarrassed by inconsiderate expenses as gave them a handsome excuse for retiring to ireland where their father had left a small property near selbridge the arrival of vanessa in dublin excited the apprehensions of swift and the jealousy of stella she importuned him with complaints of neglect and cruelty and it was obvious that any decisive measure to break their correspondence would be attended with some such tragic consequence as though late at length concluded their story about the year seventeen seventeen she retired from dublin to her house and property near selbridge to nurse her hopeless passion in seclusion from the world swift seems to have foreseen and warned her against the consequences of this step his letters uniformly exhort her to seek general society to take exercise and divert as much as possible the current of her thoughts from the unfortunate subject which was preying upon her spirits until the year seventeen twenty he never appears to have visited her at selbridge they only met when she was occasionally in dublin but in that year and down to the time of her death swift came repeatedly to selbridge but miss van marie irritated at the situation in which she found herself determined on bringing to a crisis those expectations of an union with the object of her affections to the hope of which she had clung amid every vicissitude of his conduct towards her the most probable bar was his undefined connection with mrs johnson which as it must have been perfectly known to her had doubtless long excited her secret jealousy although only a single hint to that purpose is to be found in their correspondence 
and that so early as seventeen thirteen when she writes to him then in ireland if you are very happy it is ill-natured of you not to tell me so except tis what is inconsistent with mine her silence and patience under this state of uncertainty for no less than eight years must have been partly owing to her awe for swift and partly perhaps to the weak state of her rival's health which from year to year seemed to announce speedy dissolution at length however vanessa's impatience prevailed and she ventured on the decisive step of writing to mrs johnson herself requesting to know the nature of that connection stella in reply informed her of her marriage with the dean and full of the highest resentment against swift for having given another female such a right on him as miss van marie's inquiries implied she sent to him her rival's letter of interrogation and without seeing him or awaiting his reply retired to the house of mr ford near dublin every reader knows the consequence swift in one of those paroxysms of fury to which he was liable both from temper and disease rode instantly to marley abbey as he entered the apartment the sternness of his countenance which was peculiarly formed to express the fiercer passions struck the unfortunate vanessa with such terror that she could scarce ask whether he would not sit down he answered by flinging a letter upon the table and instantly leaving the house mounted his horse and returned to dublin when vanessa opened the packet she only found her own letter to stella it was her death warrant she sunk at once under the disappointment of the delayed yet cherished hopes which had so long sickened her heart and beneath the unrestrained wrath of him for whose sake she had indulged them how long she survived this last interview is uncertain but the time does not seem to have exceeded a few weeks End of chapter fifty six recording by linda fredericks modesto california august two thousand twelve